Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Fave, and today we are on part two of our landscape technique painting series. I am showing you how to paint these two landscapes using different techniques and we are on part two today which is layering a little bit more of the wet on wet technique but mostly layering creating depth in your paintings and I think a little bit of blending as well so let's jump in and get started Okay friends, welcome to part two of our creating a painting using important techniques, step by step. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what I'm calling this series. Anyway, here is the first step that we did in our last video. Today is about adding um, some layers, wet on dry, and just enhancing these a bit more. One thing I will do is a little bit of wet on wet that we did in our first video to create an out of focus tree line um, and a reflection in the water, which I wanted this to dry first before we did that, even though it's a technique that was done in the other video. Um, but I wanted to do that for this video and then we will get to more of the uh, wet on dry stuff, the layering and all that. So. For this, this is just for this painting, what we need to do is we need to re-wet our painting so we can get a nice blurry look. If I were to start painting some trees on our horizon line, right now they would be very defined uh, because the paper is dry and when you, paint, when you paint with wet paint on dry paper, it's a very defined line. But when we do wet on wet, like we did for our clouds here, you get a really nice out of focus, kind of soft, blurry line, which is really great to show um, distance, but also in our reflection in our water here, it also helps create that blurry out of focus line like it would be a reflection in the water. So I do want to do it at, do I want to do the whole painting? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, so the tricky thing with this part ideally you want to do this when this is still wet but because i was kind of figuring that out in the last video what i wanted to do we have to re-wet this now depending on the supplies you're using um, paint and paper if you re-wet this and kind of scrub a lot with your paintbrush you might risk lifting some of that color and like moving around some of the clouds so what you need to do to make sure you're gonna get this as close to accurate as you can. If it doesn't work out, that's okay. We'll try again, we know for next time. Um, you're gonna make sure you need clean water for this painting, and you're gonna need to be very gentle with your brush. So we're gonna start from the center where it's the lightest, where there's the least amount of paint, and then we're gonna um, focus on wetting the whole paper, but starting where the least amount of paint of uh, where the least amount of paint is on the paper. Okay, and the reason why we, even though we want to just paint in this area, the reason why we have to wet the whole paper is because if we only say wet up to here, you're going to get a weird line. So I'm going to wet my brush really nicely, and I'm going to be very delicate with my brush, and I'm just going to go over very, very gentle so I'm not lifting any of that color. Okay, we're just re-wetting the paper, okay? And now as I'm getting closer to the bottom here, I might be lifting some of that color a little bit. So I'm gonna be careful, like if I dab it on my paper towel right now, you can see there's I've lifted some blue. So I don't wanna go back to that light area with my brush just yet. I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it on my paper towel just a bit, and I'm gonna go back to our horizon line and then start to wet going upwards. And I'm gonna try and not get rid of these clouds. So I don't want to go over them too much where we lose the whiteness of the clouds, but I want to make sure it's all nice and wet. Now, if your clouds start to disappear just a little bit, you can grab your, uh, your paper towel and dab again just to lift some of that color. I'll show you just really quickly. Like if you feel like you're losing a little bit of the whiteness there, you can just dab a little bit just to get some of that back. Okay, but now quickly, while this is wet, I need to take my size four. I'm gonna grab my green for our trees 
and I'm using a small brush so it's not going to bleed out too much but I'm just going to I'm going to first draw kind of like a horizon line because it's going to be kind of like a foresty background back there and I'm just going to start tapping my green along this line I might even want a darker green to be honest pick whatever green you like and I'm just going to tap it a bit like that and you want to move fairly quickly because you don't want it to dry now I'm going to start doing some like evergreen shapes so I'm just going to do a little line coming down like this little lines kind of coming down and see how they're kind of blurry and out of focus that's because we're doing some wet on wet and then I'm just going to tap side to side and these are going to be some out of focus trees in our background and they don't have to be perfect but we want to move fast because we want to do the same thing to the reflection below while it's still wet so don't worry about making these perfect or anything we're going to be painting over a lot of this area anyway with more trees that are in the foreground so don't worry too too much about that okay so now I'm going to take my green again and I'm going to do the same thing down here I'm going to try and mirror some of those taller trees see that's already dry there I didn't wet that up so I'm just going to take my brush and just wet it up a bit there we go. <laughs> okay, and this is the reflection. So it might be a little bit longer, but a little bit more sparse. So like it doesn't have to be as dense. Okay. See, it's starting to dry over there. That's the tricky part with this. It's when it starts to dry. I'm going to tilt it and see how... Yeah, it's already started to dry here, so it's making it a little difficult. Might be better to just like wet one section at a time and then do like the trees up top, then do the trees on the bottom because it's a little bit tricky to maintain that wetness. Okay, but the reflection on the bottom isn't as... <coughs> intense as the one on the top it can be a little bit more sparse because there's going to be like little water marks going through it kind of and actually what we're going to do while it's still kind of wet is we're going to just wash off our brush a bit wash oh no wash it off dry it on our paper towel just tap it on your paper towel and I'm just going to kind of do these little lines wash again so it's just kind of with clean water just dry it a little bit and do these kind of lines going through so it looks a bit more like a reflection now see this line I'm getting right here it's because more water is here than up here so it's starting to kind of push that pigment away up there which is okay it happens I'm just gonna smooth it out a bit okay and then here see this little water line right here that's because there's more water here than there is here it started to dry here a bit faster so I'm just gonna make sure my brush is dry and kind of clean and I'm just gonna blend it out a bit you just want to make sure it's dry though so you can kind of move that color around there you go okay so again I'm just washing my brush off just tapping it a little bit so there's a tiny bit of water in here I'm just kind of doing these little lines through the trees here to make it look like a reflection and it kind of lifts the color of the trees and smears it a bit so it looks like that out of focus kind of effect now if this is not working for you and it's difficult try it again okay like just keep going right now finish the painting but try it again the amount of times that I have tried to do paintings like this and it has not worked out is like too many to count Okay, so just keep that in mind that it's not always going to work out and that is okay, but we're learning. Okay, this is, these are techniques that are not the easiest, but they just take a lot of practice to kind of get the hang of and even still like 
I'm having watermarks at times and I've learned how to fix them over time and lots of practice of messing up. <laughs> so keep that in mind. Okay, so there is our wet on wet from our last technique video. We're gonna be doing the layering in a little bit, but we wanna make sure it completely dries first. So I'm gonna let this completely dry and then we will finish this and come right back. Okay, so now that it's dry, we can start doing the trees over top that are more in focus. So again, I'm just using my smaller size four brush or size two if you have, they're kind of similar. Um, and you're gonna grab your darker green and now we're gonna start to do the trees on the horizon line kind of that are more in focus so not the trees that are in the reflection and the way I love to do my evergreen trees is I do a, a line kind of going up and then I just tap to the side and then I just make it kind of uneven just like little taps you don't want it to be symmetrical you don't want them to be like lines like this okay you want them to be kind of like just tapping motions non-symmetrical trees. You don't want them to be like these perfect looking trees. It doesn't look great. And the reason why we did the wet on wet behind them is to look like the forest is a bit more dense behind it. Um, otherwise you would have a lot more white space of the sky behind it. You want to look like it's on land. Okay, so we can just do some smaller ones. And this is one way to layer, so working on the foreground. Okay, I'm gonna do one right here. Just tapping back and forth. Also, if you wanted to do like rows on rows of trees to make it really dense, you could do a lighter version of what I'm doing right now, let it completely dry, and then the, do the darker version staggered kind of in front so it looks like there's a lot more trees, it's totally up to you. I'm gonna just go across just so I know where my line is. I don't want too many tall trees here. make it a little bit shorter more like there's like little bushes here rather than trees right there it's gonna make it just tap to kind of make it uneven looking So, like that. Okay, and then for our reflection, our reflection's pretty good. Um, you might want to add a little bit of darkness and sharpness to it. So I wouldn't have a ton of color on my brush, but I might just add like a little, like really fine little lines with the green. Just kind of close to the edge where the trees are. We are going to do some more kind of ripples in the water with blue, but just to get a little bit of that green in there, just doing these tiny little lines. Now, when you're doing water, the further away the ripples are, the thinner and the shorter they are, like the smaller they are, okay? The closer to the, they are to us, to the foreground, they're going to be um, larger and darker, okay? So that just helps with depth. So I'm just gonna do some fine lines like that. Okay, and now let's do a little bit of the ripples in the water. Not really waves, but ripples. So I'm gonna take the blue that we used, which I think was this one. <laughs> yes. Okay, and again, still using my small brush. I'm gonna show you for this technique, we're layering but we're and doing wet on dry, but we're also gonna be blending. Um, I'm gonna show you how to blend out fine lines. So starting down here, we're gonna do kind of like this flattened mountain shape like this. It's like a tiny little peak, okay, with this dark, darker blue. Then 
I'm gonna wash off my brush, tap it on my paper towel a bit, and then I'm just gonna quickly blend out the bottom like that. So it's like a soft blend out. If you want it to be a bit more, like bring it down a bit more, you can. Okay, and that kind of mimics these little ripples in the water. You can even use a darker blue if you'd like. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of stagger them. So kind of like this peak, this flattened mountain. And then quickly wash off your brush, dry it a bit, because you don't want it to be a sharp line there. And you're just gonna slightly blend it out. Don't press too hard when you're blending anything out, because it will lift the paint. Tap it on your paper towel, and just very gently blend out those lines. Okay, uh, I might use a little bit of a darker blue too, like an indigo. You can always kind of tap if you wanted to make it a little bit darker, closer to the foreground. Again, wash off our brush, dry it a bit. Blend it out. Okay, you want that area below these peaks to be nice and blended. Okay, I'm gonna use a little bit more of my indigo for this, I think. I'm gonna do one that's kind of off here to the side. Blend it out. And these are gonna be the biggest ones, okay? Then we're gonna start making them a little bit smaller. Again, wash, dry. Blend it out. Make sure you dry that brush off. If you have too much water and you go back into it, it's gonna lift some of that color and repel the, the paint away. Okay. Now I don't wanna do too many of these ripples. I want it to be kind of calm. The water. So you can decide how many you do. a little bit darker there. Wash, dry, blend. Okay, so there we go. There are our ripples and if you wanted to create some more like blue ones back here for the water, you can. It's up to you. But just remember the further away they get, the lighter and the smaller they're gonna be. Okay, so there is that painting. Um, there's our layering and some of our blending and a little bit of the wet on wet technique. Now let's move on to our field painting. Okay, so for this painting, I think I wanna do a little bit of mountains in the background. I'm hoping it turns out well, I don't know. Um, and because the sunrise is kind of coming through the center here, we're gonna have them a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna start off with like an orangish color, but not, not a lot. So I'm just gonna take my orange and I'm gonna do like these mountains like this, okay? Very light and flat. And I'm not using a dark, dark orange. I'm using a very light value of orange. And this just helps make it look like there's some light on the mountain. And as we move to the sides of the mountain, it's gonna get darker of a green-ish color. Okay, so there's our orange. Now I'm gonna grab some green and I'm gonna kind of bring it over top of the orange. The orange is still wet, so it's kind of blending together. And I'm just kind of moving it down, but I'm trying to leave some of that orange still so it looks like the sun is hitting it. I'm gonna wash off my brush, dry it a bit. Try and lift some of that green, actually. I'm gonna grab a bit more orange. Especially right in the center here. Maybe a little bit of yellow. And then I'm gonna grab some darker green 
And as it gets closer to the sides here, I'm going to make it a little bit darker. So I'm going to try and create my horizon line a bit straighter, like that. And then I'm just going to create the bottom of the mountains just a little bit darker. I'm just going to blend it out a little bit. So it kind of looks like these hilly mountains in the background. And if you feel like you're bringing up too much of that dark green, wash off your brush, dry it on your paper towel, and then blend out those edges. Okay, that kind of takes care of that hard edge. Like that. There's kind of like our hill, but see how it's lighter towards the center? It really makes it look like the sun is kind of coming through. Okay, and you can add a little bit more yellow and uh, orange to that if you'd like, just to make it a little bit brighter. And because we added the darkness around the sides, it also looks like the sun is kind of shining um, through the center. Now, I'm gonna show you another thing that I just kind of thought of. <laughs> if you wanna make it look like there are sun rays kind of coming up from the sunset, what you can do is another version of the lifting technique. I'm gonna take my smaller brush, clean water, Okay, get it wet. And then once this is all dry, which it is now, I'm gonna pick a point kind of where the sun was. Like maybe I'll just do a little circle like this. Maybe the sunset was right there. And I'm gonna take my paper towel and I'm gonna dab that. Like there was a bit of sun there. Then I'm gonna wash off my brush again with clean water and I'm gonna create these little sun rays. And I'm just gonna kind of go over the same area with this clean water. And then I'm going to dab it with my brush and it lifts just a little bit. So see how it's kind of like this little sun ray going over the mountain? And then I'm going to do another one, again, coming from the same spot. Just go over and over. Clean water. Take your paper towel, dab it, and you have another little sun ray. Okay, do another one going this way. Like that, just a little hint of the sunset giving off those rays. Now, as you see, we don't really have a sun painted in our painting here, which we can kind of fix um, after. Oops, that's too dark. I was just trying to. There we go. Um, we can add some white paint or even just like some yellow. Just kind of create a sun here, like it's going down, if you want. We didn't do that before. Now it's kind of a little dark, so if you want to gra grab some white paint to make it really nice and bright, you can do that. I'm just using white watercolor. like that. And you can kind of just use that white watercolor to have some of those sun rays coming off the sun a bit. Like that. That looks really nice. And then maybe just like a little bit of orange, just a little bit of warmth to it. Some of those rays like that. Okay, so there's our sun and our mountains. That's all we're gonna do for this second video of the painting. Um, our last video is gonna be extra little details and some techniques. Uh, so make sure you check back for that, but I hope you enjoyed this second part. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on all my other platforms for tons more content. I'll see you guys for our last part three on Friday. Have a great day, guys. Bye.